Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, please click on the subscribe button. In this video, I'm going to be looking at TDOBG 2019. So I will be answering questions from one to 40. Question one. Figure one shows a drawing instrument. Use it to answer questions one and two. Let's see the drawing instrument. This is a T square. The part labeled P is the stock. It's not the fastener, it's not the blade, it's not the O. The part label X is the blade and the part label P is the stock. So the answer to question one is A. Question two, the part label X, remember I said the part label X is called the blade and is used to draw horizontal lines. Is used to draw horizontal lines. So question two is B. Question two is B. We move on to question three. Which of the following lines is used for sectioning? Now, when you're sectioning, you use a section line. And this section line is what you see in B. A is used for thin short dashes. It's called thin short dashes and it's used to indicate hidden details. When you look at B, B is a thick long chain. It's used for viewing and cutting plane. It's also used as section lines to section a particular object. C is dimension line with arrow edge, while D is, I'll call it thick short dashes, and there is nothing like thick short dashes. So question three is B. The answer is B. I move on to question four. The dimension of the A3 drawing sheet is A, A41 millimeters by 591 millimeters, B, 594 millimeter by 420, C, 420 by 297, D, 297 by 210. The dimension of A3 paper is 420 by 297 millimeters. Question, so the answer to question B, question four is C. I move on to question five. In the construction shown in figure two, the value POQ is, let's look at POQ, this is POQ. This construction is used for angle 60. When you want to construct angle 60, you construct it this way, then when you want to bisect to get angle 30, you divide using this method. So when you look at POQ, the angle at O is 30 degrees. I move on to question six. The sum of angles of a right angled triangle is 90 degrees. A right angled triangle is 90 degrees. So question C is, is B. Question six, the answer to question six is B. I move on to question seven.
Question seven says, a regular tetrahedron is a triangular pyramid, rectangular pyramid, pentagonal prism, hexagonal prism. The answer to question seven is triangular pyramid. This is what we call tetrahedron. It has one, two, three, and the base, four triangular faces. So it is called a tetrahedron. The answer to question seven is A. Question eight. If a length one meter on land is represented by four centimeter on a drawing, the scale used is A, one ratio 20, B, one ratio 25, C, one ratio 40, D, one ratio 50. Now, when you want to do this, you have to bring them, bring the two units into the same units, the two values given to you into the same units. Now we are to convert one meter to centimeter. When you convert one meter to centimeter, you get 100 centimeter, 100 centimeter. Now we are going to use the representative fraction. The representative fraction equals distance drawn over distance represented. Distance drawn over distance represented. And from the question, we have the distance drawn on the paper to be four centimeter. You can see four centimeter on a drawing. So we have four over 100. When you divide four over 100, four year one, four in 100, that is 25. So the ratio is one ratio 25. So the answer to question eight, is B. Answer to question eight is B. I'm going to question nine. Question nine, the line PR, this is P and this is R, and the base of this triangle is QS. The line PR in figure three, this is figure three, is called A, altitude, B, centroid, C, median, D, hypotenuse. The line PR is the median. And I'm going to show you why is the median and not centroid. So let's see. Now, when you look at this sketch, this drawing, you will see that the line drawn from the middle of the base, this is the base of the triangle, to the apex. This line divides the base into two equal parts. This line is called the median. Now, when you also come to this side, this line drawn from this point to this apex is also called what? Median. Same as number three. This is line three. You can see this line three is equal to this. The line drawn from the mid of the base to the apex is called the median. Now, the point where the three medians meet is called centroid. Is called centroid. I also want to show you the difference between median and altitude. When you look at it, you think it is the altitude. The, the difference between the two, let's see. Now, when we say altitude, altitude is the line drawn from the base to the apex and is making an angle of 90 degrees. Altitude can be drawn from anywhere, as you can see, is making an angle of 90 degrees to the, apex, to the base. So now the median is drawn from the middle of BC to point A, from the middle of BC to point A. 
So line PR is the median. So the answer to question nine is C, the front view of a right cone is A, rectangular, B, square, C, triangular, D, circular. The answer to question 10 is C, because the front view of a right cone is triangular. Question 11. The second trends of a circle is its A, area, B, perimeter, C, arc, D, diameter. When we say the circumference of a circle, it is the same as the perimeter because it's the measurement of the boundary of the circle. So the answer to question 11 is B. B is the perimeter. Question 12. The circles shown in figure four are concentric, eccentric, circumscribed, inscribed. The circle shown is concentric because the circles, they have the same center. They are drawn from the same center. When they are drawn from different centers, we have, we call it eccentric and circumscribe is when you have a circle drawn outside another object inscribed is when you have a circle drawn inside and another shape when you have a circle drawn inside another shape be it triangle or a square we call it inscribed question 13 the locus, which uses two concentric circles as a method for its construction, is A, cycloid, B, hyperbola, C, parabola, D, ellipse. Question 13, the answer to question 13 is D, ellipse. Ellipse, you can construct ellipse using auxiliary circles method, which is also known as concentric circles method. You can construct a circle using approximate method. You can construct it using rectangular method. You can construct it using foci method. I move on to the next question. Question 14. The eccentricity of a parabola is 1.33, 1.00, 0.75, 0.67. The eccentricity of a parabola is unity, and that is what? One. When it's above one, that is hyperbola. And when it's less than one, it is ellipse. So the answer to question 14 is B. Use figure five to answer questions 15 and 16. Figure five, to answer question 15 and 16. Line PQ, this is PQ, is a radius, tangent, cut, diameter. Line PQ is a cut. Now, part of a circle, this is radius drawn from the center to any point. This is a sector, this is segment, this is an arc. This is a cord drawn from one point to another. It touches the circumference at two points, but not at the center. When it passes through the center, we call it a diameter. So the answer to question 15 is C. The shaded portion, this is the shaded portion. The shaded portion is called the segments. Answer to question 16 is A. Two circles shown in figure six are, two circles shown in figure six are ascribed, tangential, concentric, 
eccentric, the two circles are tangential because we can see it touches at a point. So question seven, question 19, which of the following, which of the following is not on a principal plane? Front elevation, plan, and elevation. We have the principal views. These are the front elevation, the plan, the end elevation. Now, the one that is not on a principal plane is called the auxiliary. Question 19 is B. Question 20. In figure eight, the ratio of the major axis to the minor axis is five ratio three. If the minor axis is 60, what is the length MF2? What is the length MF2? I want to see MF2. What is the length MF2? So MF2 and MF1 are the same. So whatever we get for MF2 is the same as MF1. So let's see, the ratio of the major to the minor is five ratio three. Five ratio three. Okay, the ratio of major to minor is five ratio three. And we are given minor to be what? 60. We are given minor to be 60. So we are looking for major. So when you cross multiply, 3x equals 5 times 60. That gives us 300. So from here, the major, which is x, equals 100. Major equals 100. Now, if the major equals 100, that means PQ equals 100. For you to get MF2 or MF1, you make use of half the major axis, half of the major axis. Now, PQ equals 100, divide PQ by 2, that gives you 50. So center at N, you strike an arc here, center at N, you strike an arc, an arc here, that gives you F1 and F2. So B, question 20 is 50, which is B. Question 20 is B. I move on to question 21. Isometric views are drawn to the horizontal with which of the following pair of angles? 30 by, 30 by 60, 45 by 60, 30 by 90, 45 by 90. Isometric views are drawn to the horizontal with 30 and 90 degrees. So the answer to question 21 is C. Question 22. Figure 9 shows the orthographic view of a block in first angle with P as the lowest point. Use it to answer questions 22 and 23. Isometric view. Use it to answer question 22 and 23. So let's see. The isometric view of the block is, okay, let's see P, A, this is the arrangement in first angle, the front, P is the front, no, no, okay, I go back to P, on the front, you have this and a rectangle. So I have this and a rectangle. Then on the end view, I have this and a rectangle. So let's see. So I have this and a rectangle at the base. So the answer, the isometric view is C. Answer to question 22 is C. 
I move on to question 23. The oblique view, oblique view of the object is shown in a no, B, the answer to question 23 is B, is not C, is not D. You can see the oblique view when one part is drawn plane to the horizontal and the other part is inclined. So the answer to question 23 is B. Figure 10 shows a link mechanism. Use it to answer questions 24 and 25. Let's say question 24, the link OR. This is link OR, question 24. Link OR is the connecting rod, piston, crank, gun jump pin. OR is called the crank. Question 24 is C. OR is the crank. If link OR moves in a clockwise direction, the link RP will, let's go back to the diagram. This is OR. If it moves in a clockwise direction, that's the direction of this arrow. If it moves in a clockwise direction, this crank if it moves in a clockwise direction, let's say it moves, OR moves from this point to this point. What will happen to the rod? This is the rod or the link, RP. What will happen? It will slide towards R because it's moving in a clockwise direction. So question, the answer to question 25 is D. It will slide towards R. Question 26. Which of the following is the plan of a rectangular pyramid? A, B, C, or D? The answer is D. The plan of a rectangular pyramid. You see the base, this is the rectangle, and you see the pyramid. This is the meeting point. So the answer to question 26 is B. I move on to question 27. Which of the following views represents the true shape of section on cutting plane XX of the orosphere in figure 11? This is the cutting plane, cutting plane XX. This is the cutting plane and this is a sphere. Hollow sphere. So let's see which of these represents it. Is it an ellipse, oval, a curve, or a circle? Now, when you cut a sphere, when you cut a sphere by a plane, the true shape of the section is a circle because it is cut at 90 degrees. The true shape, you get a true shape when you position at 90 degrees. So the shape of the section is always a circle. The answer to question 27 is D. Question 28. Which of the following shows the correct sectioning of a web? A, B, C or D? The answer is D. Because when you cut through a web, a web is a machine part that you don't hash. So when you expose the full shape of the web, you will see it this way. You will leave it on hash. This is one of the basic principles. So you leave it on hash, you don't hash. So all other options are wrong. You only hash the part where the cutting plane touches, which is this L shape. So the answer to question 28 is D. Figure 12 shows the development of a cylinder. Use it to answer question 29 and 30. The method of development shown is A, parallel line, 
B, radial line, C, triangulation, D, circular. This method for developing a cylinder is parallel line. We can use this method to develop cylinders. You can use it to develop prisms. But when you want to develop pyramids and cone, you make use of radial line. Triangulation is when you, what you use for tetrahedron, octahedron, icosahedron, dodecahedron. So we have, there is nothing like secular method. So question 29, the answer to question 29 is A. Now question 30 says, the length K is equal to, can we say length K? This is K. For you to get length K, you have to divide the, um, you have to divide the cylinder, which is the circle. The circle, you divide it into 12 equal parts. That gives you the circumference of the circle. So you have to divide this into 12 equal parts. So that means you need 12 of X to be able to get length K. So question 30 is, the answer to question 30 is D, 12 S. Quickly, I move on to building drawing part one. The answer to building drawing is the same answer you get when you look at the mechanical drawing questions. Figure 13 shows the sketch of a two bedroom bungalow. Use it to answer question 31 to 33. Now question 31. The portion marked K, this is the, this is K. The portion marked K, K is very close to the kitchen. And you can assess K from outside. So you can see this is the door leading to K. So K is an open space. There is no thick wall. You don't have a wall along the side. So it's open. The portion mark key is A, couch, B, stove, C, balcony, D, wardrobe. I'll go with A. 31 is a porch because it's an outdoor structure. It's an open space that is built near an entryway, just like the front or the back door. So question 31 is a porch. The portion mark J is a, let's see J. J is in between, it's within the building. You can see from J, you can assess the living room. J, you can assess to WC or AMBAT. So J is a lobby or a passage, it's a passage. So let's see, J is a porch, balcony, veranda, passage, 32 is D. Question 33, if the wall is 150 thick, then the internal dimension of the WC and BAT is a 1,900, B, 1,800, C, 1,750, D, 1,600. Can we see the wall, the portion of the WC? This is WC. And this dimension from year to year is 1,009, but it is placed in between, in between the walls. So if the wall thickness is 150, so this is 150 and this is 150. All we need to do, divide 150 into two and divide 150 into two. So from 1,009, I will deduct 150 because 75 year plus 75 year gives me 150. So 1,009, take away 150. I will have 1,750, 1,750. So the internal dimension of the WC and back is 1750. So the answer to question 33 is C. The material conventional representation shown in figure 14 is glass, concrete, wool, and water. This is used for liquid. 
is used for liquid. So the answer is D, water. Question 35. Which of the following is pitched at one side only? A, hetero. B, shadro. C, butterfly. D, gable rope. Let me show you the different types of rope that we have. This is gable, heaped, drudge, mansard, flax, shed, butterfly, gambra, doma, shed rope. So you can see the one that is pitched at one side is shed rope. So the answer to question 35 is B. Answer to question 35 is B. I move on to question 36. The two shown in figure 15 is a screwdriver, chisel, file, scraper. This tool is a scraper, is a chisel, is a chisel. So let me show you the diagram. This is a chisel and this is a scraper. We can see the difference between the two. You can see the difference between a scraper and a chisel. So the answer to question, Thesis is B is a chisel. I move on to question 37. Which of the following is not part of a building foundation? Add core is part, earth filling is part, DPC is part, skirting is not a part of a building foundation. Skirting is shown, you can see it within the building, is not in the foundation, is used to conceal openings between the wall and the floor. So the answer to question 37 is D. I move on to question 38. Because the thing shows a section through a building, use it to answer questions 38 and 39. The lintel is the portion labeled I, J, K, L. I know, J, no, K. Lintel is placed above openings, door and window openings. So the portion labeled K is the lintel. Answer to question 38 is C. I move on to question 39. Which of the following is not shown on section, on the section in figure 16? Let's see which one is not shown. We have blinding, concrete slab, hardcore, screed. We have the screed that is above L. We have L to be the concrete slab. We have the next layer to be the hardcore and the blinding is not shown. So the answer to question 39 is A. The last question on the building drawing, a building specification given as 150 by 225 reinforced concrete with 12 mm rendering on both sides is referred to lintel, roof, door, floor. It's referred to as the lin a lintel. A lintel has uh, the specification 150 by 225 reinforced concrete. So the answer to question 40 is A. I'll quickly run through the mechanical drawing questions. There's the same answer as the building drawing. So for mechanical drawing, question 31, the figure shown. Figure 17 shows the convention for representing a tension spring, compression spring, torsion spring, leaf spring. This is used to represent a tension spring. So 31 is a question 32. Which of the following boats has a land profile? A, B, C, or D? The boat that has Allen profile 
is D. Question 32 is D. Figure 18 shows part sectional view of a boat, stored, pipe, shirt. Question 33 is C. Because when you cut through, when you look at the plan of a pipe, you have the shape. And when you section through a pipe, you see the thickness, you see this thickness, and you hash them, then you have this wavy line to show that it's a part section. So question 33 is C. I move on to question 34. Figure 19 shows part of a machine assembly. Use it to answer questions 34 and 35. The two views represent A, pipe, B, script, C, thought, D, shot. Question 34 is D, is a shot. This is a shot. The part labeled Y in the assembly, let's see why. Y is the gib head. Y is the gib head. So question 35, the answer is B. We are looking at the last aspect of this video. So question 36, figure 20 shows a workpiece with A, groups, B, chamfers, C, knobs, D, bevels. This part shows a chamfered end. It shows a chamfered end. When you bevel, is a slope. This is also a beveled end, but when it connects two points, when it connects two surfaces, this is one and two, it is a chamfered end. A beveled end is just an edge that is slow, but a chamfered end connects two surfaces. That is why question 36 is B, 37. Which of the following has an internal trait? Stored, bolt, screw, and knot. Question seven is, 37 is D. A knot has an internal trait, while a bolt has an external trait. Question 38, the path label G, this is G. G is a web. G is a web. That is, question 38 is C. Question 39. The part labeled H. H is internal trait. H is internal trait. Is inside the knot. So you can see it here. This is H, is internal. So it's internal trait, 39. The part labeled H is A, internal trait. It's traded internally. Question. 40, which is the last question. The construction of a boat is started with the regular hexagon, chamfer curve, threaded length, nominal diameter. The construction of a boat is started with the regular hexagon. 